The story goes, when Gauss is just a little, little boy, like, you know, I don't know, early primary school, he had a really lazy teacher who just wanted his students to leave him alone, okay? So the lazy teacher said to the whole class, he said, okay, look, uh, here's a task for you. We're going to do some mathematics today. I want you to add up the numbers 1 to 100 and then come back to me when you're finished, right? So, so students, most of them, started dutifully working out partial sums. They said, okay, 1 plus 2, that's 3. Uh, 3 plus 3, 6, the next one will be 10. By the way, 1, 3, 6, 10, the next one's going to be 15. They are also important numbers, but it's beside the point. And they were suitably, you know, occupied. But of course, Gauss. Gauss came up within seconds and said, oh, it's okay. The, um, the sum of all of these is 5,050. Said it without batting an eyelid. To which the lazy teacher was, you know, obviously suitably upset because they thought, oh, I had a great task to shut up my students for a while, and it failed. Now, how did he get his answer so rapidly and so efficiently? Well, he used a technique which I'm going to teach you today in year 12. Okay, here's what he did. I'm actually going to, because to, to give you guys a little bit of dignity, we're going to tackle a problem that is slightly larger than what Gauss was going to do. So instead of this problem, which is very specific and it just has an answer, I want to consider this problem. 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus da 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 da. I want to end, rather than 100 terms, I want to end, because we've been talking about partial sums up to the nth term, I want to end, end at n. Okay? So, I'm just going to write a few extra terms on here. Oops, sorry. No, that's not what I want. That's the, that's the wrong sequence. That, that, and that. Okay, so this is, this is the sum up to the nth term. Okay. Now, just before I do anything here, I want to point out to you what I was talking about before. Remember I showed you the alternating harmonic series and I showed you it um, was a bit dangerous, right? What we were mucking around with there was this law here, this one that I've written at the top. This is what we call the law of commutativity because addition is what we call commutative. You can switch the order and it's okay, but you can only switch the order in certain cases. You'll notice this only takes a pair of numbers. A pair of numbers, right? If what you have is an infinite string of numbers, okay, the sum is sometimes actually the same if you rearrange, but often, like the example I showed you before, it is not. Okay? So I just want to point out the danger happens with infinity, right? There are lots of reasons why infinity is a dangerous thing. I can keep, we can talk about the rigorous proof later on. But suffice to say, when you have a look at this, is this in the first category or the second category? Second. No, first. Is it the first category or the second category? Right? What makes the second category the second category is that, yeah, well, more specifically, it doesn't end. Right? The fact that it doesn't end is what makes it dicey. Okay? Now, this is an indeterminate length, but it, it does finish. It's got an end point. Okay? So therefore, I can rearrange to my heart's delight and no rules of the universe will be violated. Okay? The reason why that's important is because here is essentially what Gauss did. Right? I can actually do it here on, um, on his sequence. Right? If I just put in 99, that would do. What he did, very, very clever trick, is he took his terms and he realized, this is the color I want, he realized that because it's an AP, well, not in so many words, but because it's an AP, it has this marvelous symmetry to it. Do you see it has symmetry? Right? As terms increase from the left going to the right, they decrease going from the right to the left. That makes sense, doesn't it? Not only does it increase and decrease, they increase and decrease at the same rate, and that's crucial. The reason why it's crucial is because I can do some pairing here, right? I can take the first term and the last term. I can add them together. Give me a sum, in this case, 101. And I can look at the second term and the second last term. And because they grow and shrink at the same rate, because all APs do, this pair will also add up to 101. Okay? Now, all the pairs add up to 101. How many pairs are there? There are 50 pairs, because if n is 100, right, I halve that, and then I get the number of pairs, which is 50. 50 times 101 gives you his answer. Okay? Now, here's the interesting thing, though. Um, what happens 
if I can't pair up? Because I can't pair up every single sequence that's out there. I only get to coincidentally pair this thing up because it has an even number of terms. Okay? So for instance, if I considered this very, very similar sequence, um, 98 plus 99, I'm just going to stop there. Okay? Now, thankfully, because I know what S of 100 is and I know what... Uh, Sorry, I know what S of 100 is, and I know what T 100 is. It's pretty easy to work out what S of 99 is, isn't it? We just looked at this formula. I just have to take the difference. Okay? No big deal. But how am I going to use my pairing thing here? Hmm. Here's how I'm going to do it. I don't have pairs if I have an odd number of numbers. So the easiest way to make an odd number of numbers is to, sorry, make it even, is to double it. Right? That will give me an even number of numbers. Right? Now here's where I'm going to invoke this. It's kind of important, right? The pairing worked because we paired up the first and the last, the second and the second last, and so on. So I'm going to do the same thing here. If I've doubled it, I could write it in the same order, but it will be more useful to me if I write it in reverse. Do you see why? Let's do it. I'm going to have n there. I'm going to have n minus 1 there, n minus 2 there, which pair, which term will match up with n minus 2 on this end? It'll be the third last, second last, last. So this should be 3, right? And this should be 2, and this should be 1. Now I have my magical pairs, right? And they still do the same thing. There, and there, and there. Now in Gauss's case, they would still add up to 101. In our case, our generalized case, right? What does each pair add up to? N plus, n plus 1, n plus 1, and n plus 1, and n plus 1. Now, how many n plus, no, it better, what? Uh, I'm not there yet, I'm on the right hand side. I'm on the right hand side, right? How many n plus 1's do I have? N. I have n of them, don't I? Because I doubled, I doubled the number of terms in the series, right? There's n terms on this line, but if I take both lines, because they're paired, there'll be 2n, right? So, da 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 da, all the way up until the nth pairing, right? But of course, I've got twice as many things as I want, right? So, being that there are n pairs that are n plus 1 in size, but I don't want double the nth partial sum, I just want the nth partial sum, I divide, okay? So, Gauss's case was for n equals. 100, but I can do it for anything. And you can see that my second method doesn't rely on there being an even number of terms, right? Like I did here. I'm going to match it up with a different sequence and it will work. Okay. All right, now, last little bit. I know the bell's about to go. I want you to think about this in the context of an AP, right? This is a particular AP. What about any AP, okay? Watch with me. If I say that what I've got here is a sum of terms, right? The first term, and then what's the next term in an AP? Any AP? A plus the common difference, right? And then A plus two lots of the common difference. Now, in Gauss's situation, he had the last term. And in a, in a tragedy of naming consistency, the first term is A, and the last term should be should be Z because that's the last letter of the alphabet. <laughs> but unfortunately, they were like, "Oh, L is for last. Let's make it L, even though A is not for first." But whatever. <laughs> now, if that's the last term, what's the um, preceding term? Think preceding, preceding. It's L minus the common difference, right? So now, if I do my pairing, I'm going to take a bit of a shortcut. How big is each pair? What's the size of each pair when I combine it? It was 101 oh, here. It's a, a, a plus L, right? Oh, How many of these two. pairs do I have? L over 2. L is the value of the no, last term. What? But N is how many terms I have. One more line, I promise, OK? For a sum of N terms in an AP, I actually know what the nth term is, don't I? I have a formula for this guy. What's the formula for the nth term? A plus it's a plus how many lots of the common difference? N minus, n minus one. one. So if I pop that in instead, 
I have this. And on two. How many A's are there inside the brackets? There's that one and there's this one. Two A. Two A. And then I've got N minus one lots of the common difference. Okay. Yay!